Hi, I'm David Levithan. I'm the author of the new book, Every Day. Every Day is about a, a person who, since birth, has woken up every day in a different body and a different life, and um, is 16 and very used to this, and really just going through the motions, doesn't think, ever have attachments, and really is coasting through life. But then, A, the character meets a girl, and suddenly, life has some meaning. And so what the book is about, it's about what, what is life like if you don't have a body and a life, if you change every day when you don't have a gender, when you don't have a race, you don't have parents, really your, your only history is your very personal history and your only self is the self that's created inside of you. And then from the girl's point of view, the question is, can you actually love somebody if they're changing literally every day? And can love conquer that? Or do we have such proclivities towards romance and towards who we love that it's unconquerable to, to love somebody who alters themselves so frequently. So that is really what it's about. Um, I'm going to do you a favor and read just from the beginning so I don't have to really set this up. Um, this is A on day 5994 of A's life. I wake up. Immediately I have to figure out who I am it's not just the body, opening my eyes and discovering whether the skin on my arm is light or dark, whether my hair is long or short, whether I'm fat or thin, boy or girl, scarred or smooth. The body is the easiest thing to adjust to if you're used to waking up in a new one each morning. It's the life, the context of the body, that can be hard to grasp. Every day I am someone else. I am myself. I know I am myself. But I'm also someone else. It has always been like this. The information is there. I wake up, open my eyes, understand that it is a new morning, a new place. The biography kicks in, a welcome gift from the not-me part of the mind. Today, I'm Justin. Somehow I know this, my name is Justin. And at the same time, I know that I'm not really Justin, I'm only borrowing his life for a day. I look around and know this, this is his room, this is his house. The alarm will go off in seven minutes. I'm never the same person twice, but I've certainly been this type before. Clothes everywhere, far more video games than books, sleeps in his boxers. From the taste of his mouth, a smoker, but not so addicted that he needs one as soon as he wakes up. Good morning, Justin, I say, checking out his voice, low. The voice in my head is always different. Justin doesn't take care of himself. His scalp itches, his eyes don't want to open, he hasn't gotten much sleep. Already I know I'm not going to like today. I read his parents easily. Justin doesn't talk to them much in the morning, so I don't have to talk to them. I've grown accustomed to sensing expectation in others or the lack of it. I shovel down some cereal, leave the bowl in the sink without washing it, grab Justin's keys, and go. Yesterday I was a girl in a town I'd guessed to be two hours away. The day before that I was a boy in a town three hours farther than that. I'm already forgetting their details. I have to, or else I will never really remember who I am. Justin listens to loud and obnoxious music on a loud and obnoxious station where loud and obnoxious DJs make loud and obnoxious jokes as a way of getting through the morning. This is all I need to know about Justin, really. I access his memory to show me the way to school, which parking space to take, which locker to go to, the combination, the names of the people he knows in the halls. Sometimes I can't go through these motions. I can't bring myself to go to school, maneuver through the day. I'll say I'm sick, stay in bed, and read a few books. But even that gets tiresome after a while. And I find myself up for the challenge of a new school, new friends, for a day. As I take Justin's books out of his locker, I can feel someone hovering on the periphery. I turn, and the girl standing there is transparent in her emotions, tentative and expectant, nervous and adoring. I don't have to access Justin to know that this is his girlfriend. No one else would have this reaction to him, so unsteady in his presence. She's pretty, but she doesn't see it. She's hiding behind her hair, happy to see me and unhappy to see me at the same time. Rhiannon. Her name is Rhiannon. And for a moment, just the slightest beat, I think that yes, this is the right name for her. I don't know why. I don't know her. But it feels right. This is not Justin's thought. It's mine. I try to ignore it. I'm not the person she wants to talk to. Hey, I say, casual to a fault. Hey.
she murmurs back. She's looking at the floor at her inked in converse. She's drawn cities there, skylines around the souls. Something's happened between her and Justin, and I don't know what it is. It's probably not something that Justin even recognized at the time. Are you okay? I ask. I see the surprise on her face even as she tries to cover it. This is not something Justin normally asks. And the strange thing is, I want to know the answer. The fact that he wouldn't care makes me want it more. Sure, she says, not sounding sure at all. I find it hard to look at her. I know from experience that beneath every peripheral girl is a central truth. She's hiding hers away, but at the same time she wants me to see it. That is, she wants Justin to see it. And it's there, just out of my reach. A sound waiting to be a word.